next we're going to have James Allen Gardner, or as I call him, Jag. <laughs> yes, and, and all, my, uh, all my video game characters are Jaguar, J.A. Gardner, uh, which shows you how long I've been playing video games that when I made up that name, I thought it was really cool. Um, <laughs> So, uh, thanks to the, uh, uh, thanks to When Words Collide for inviting me here. Thanks to all of you for not walking out as soon as I stood up here. Um, I am a, uh, my, my most recent uh, books have been, let's call them fantasy, uh, superheroes versus monsters, vampires, werewolves, demons, that sort of thing. I've also written a number of science fiction novels. Uh, and uh, I often go to science fiction conventions, and nobody ever asks me, why do you write science fiction and fantasy? But I think there are people here who don't actually read science fiction and fantasy, so I get to talk about. Uh, some of you may think, why science fiction and fantasy? Um, I'll start with a story from Stephen King. He was at some sort of writer's conference. He was standing on a balcony overlooking a lake. It was sunset. And Louis L'Amour was there with him. Louis L'Amour, a famous writer of westerns. And L'Amour looked across the lake and to the forest on the far side and said, you know, that forest is exactly where rustlers would have kept the horses that they'd stolen, the cows that they'd stolen, because they'd keep them in the trees during the day. Nobody would be able to see them. Then about this hour of night, when it's starting to get dark, hard to see, but still enough light to see, to uh, move the cattle around, move the horses around, they'd bring them down to the lake to water them, and then they'd get them back into the forest before it was too dark to see. Meanwhile, Stephen King is thinking, you know that lake? I bet there's something really nasty at the bottom of this. And <laughs> this is exactly the time it would come out to feed. <laughs> Stephen King had a horror writer's mind. And Louis L'Amour had a Western writer's mind. And I have a science fiction fantasy uh, mind. I know exactly why. Because when I was seven years old, my great uncle used to buy me a comic book a week. And at that time, uh, there were a few Western comics, and there were plenty of romance comics, uh, maybe one or two army comics. But basically, most comic books were superheroes. And I grew up reading superheroes, and it just was a natural step from comic books when I started reading what we call chapter books now, although they certainly didn't use that phrase then. When I started reading chapter books, uh, I just naturally read science fiction and fantasy uh, because they were kind of a carry-on from comic books. Now, uh, many of you, as I say, I often address uh, uh, science fiction and fantasy uh, conventions and readers. Um, uh, so you may, they, you may be used to, uh, uh, if you're a science fiction and fantasy reader, uh, seeing the two of them paired together. But if you're more interested in thrillers or romance or uh, uh, mysteries, you may wonder why are science fiction and fantasy grouped together. Uh, some people don't group them together. Some people are very adamant that uh, science fiction and fantasy are completely different animals. Uh, I don't see Rob Sawyer in the audience, but he will uh, hold forth on that uh, any time that will, people will stand still and listen. Um, <laughs> And, and it's kind of weird, right, because you'd think science fiction kind of has to be scientific, right, or at least a veneer of sci scientific plausibility, whereas fantasy has to have something supernatural or magic or something like that, something that is anti-scientific. So what's the connection? Why? Uh, when you go into chapters, is there likely a science fiction and fantasy section as opposed to a science fiction section and a fantasy section? Um, 
One reason is that there's a lot of overlap between readers. A lot of the same people read uh, science fiction and read uh, fantasy. There's also a lot of overlap between writers. A lot of people like me who write both science fiction and fantasy. There's big overlap in the publishing companies. There are small presses that only do science fiction or only do fantasy, but the big publishing companies uh, do both and often have a single division, almost always have a single division that does both. So what is the connection between science fiction and fantasy? What do I think it is? Well, some people say that it's because both are presuppose a world in which something is different from our real world, uh, that there is a deliberate, overt, uh, factor that is not our real world. So uh, in science fiction might take place in another place in time, out in space, a far future, far past. Even if it takes place today, uh, there's something that is uh, contrary to what we believe in the world, say aliens are running the government. Uh, we hope that that's not true. And uh, some, there's, for example, alternate history. I don't know if you know what alternate history is, but it's assuming something in the past went differently. Uh, the, the Nazis won World War II or something like that. And that's another type of science fiction. On the fantasy side, uh, it's pretty obvious that there's something uh, that, something unreal that is in fantasy. Um, if let's say uh, you're writing a story about angels and you believe in angels and you expect your readership to believe in angels, uh, well then you're writing Christian fiction. You aren't writing fantasy. It's only fantasy if you don't believe in it. Um, <laughs> ghost, same thing with ghost stories. If you, the author believes in ghosts and the readership are expected to believe in ghosts, then it's not fantasy. It's, I don't know, new age, something like that. It's, it's only fantasy if you don't believe it. So uh, maybe that's the connection that uh, both science fiction and fantasy explicitly, deliberately, upfront assume something that we know is not true. Um, that begs the question, why would anyone want to read that sort of thing? Um, it's often said that science fiction and fantasy uh, might be good preparation for the future. We know that the future is not going to be like today. So if we read uh, about worlds that aren't like today, then maybe that will prepare us better for the future to live in a, a world that, again, is not going to be like today. That's pretty certain. Uh, Another thing, science fiction and fantasy readers have the reputation of being, well, <clears throat> nerds and geeks. And uh, maybe it's comforting to them, nerds and geeks and losers, um, <laughs> to read about worlds that aren't like our present day. You know, you know, it doesn't have to be like this, folks. There can be other worlds. It's all right. Uh, maybe someday you folks will be on top. <laughs> As if uh, that, uh, you know, science fiction and fantasy haven't already won in making, you know, the world's biggest, uh, best uh, earning movie is, well, Avengers now. And uh, uh, science fiction and fantasy, of course, have really uh, conquered a lot of uh, the mainstream world. Anyway. Why do I think that uh, science fiction and fantasy are so often said in the same breath? I think the answer is comic books. Um, DC comic books, for all my life, the three biggest heroes in DC. Uh, number one, Superman. Uh, he's an alien from outer space. He's a science fiction guy for sure. Number two, Batman. High tech stuff, science fiction-y type equipment. But number three? Wonder Woman, who is definitely Greek mythology, a fantasy character. Um, Marvel, si Marvel side, the very first Marvel superhero, superhero group, was Fantastic Four. Definitely science fiction. They got in a rocket ship, went into space, went through a weird meteor storm. That's how they got their powers. Second Marvel superhero was the Hulk. 
science fiction guy again. Uh, he was made the way he is by being bombarded with gamma radiation, whatever the heck that is. Um, so another science fiction guy, but number three, the third Marvel superhero was Thor. Again, Norse mythology this time, but a very obvious fantasy character. And comic books have been like that my entire life. Uh, starting in the early 60s and moving on. They're straddling both science fiction and fantasy uh, all the time. Uh, the very first Avengers comic, which I owned, um, uh, my uncle bought it for me, um, it uh, featured uh, Iron Man and Ant-Man, definitely uh, science fiction characters. They got their powers from technology. But it also featured Thor, and the villain was Loki. Um, so right there, right from the very beginning of the modern age of comics, uh, there's both science fiction and fantasy uh, in the same issue. And if you pick up an issue of any comic, you know, since 1962, uh, maybe it will be a superhero fighting an evil scientist, but maybe it will be a superhero fighting an evil wizard. And any, is any issue, you don't know which it's, it go which it's going to be. And I think that's why science fiction and fantasy, at least today, are so closely uh, thought to be married. A lot of us came to uh, uh, prose fiction through comic books. A lot of readers came, that, uh, came through comic books. A lot of writers came through comic books. And so it's just natural for us to think of uh, science fiction and fantasy put together, uh, which is why we write both or interchangeably so. Um, I want to say one more thing about uh, uh, science fiction and fantasy before I sit down. Um, it's, I said that uh, uh, it's implicitly, explicitly uh, unreal. Science fiction and fantasy. It's not science fiction or fantasy unless it has something that we don't believe is currently true. Uh, if it, everything in it is true, then maybe it's a thriller which is great, uh, but it's not science fiction or fantasy. Um, so you'd think that maybe there is a core of unbelievability to uh, uh, science fiction fantasy, and I'm going to say that's not true. Uh, I believe in uh, Batman and Spider-Man and Superman. It's like people I know. Uh, I've known them all since I was seven. I don't know anybody else I knew when I was seven. I haven't, I haven't kept touch with anybody I went to public school with. I haven't kept touch with uh, uh, anyone I went to high school with. I kept touch with Batman. Uh, I read a Spider-Man comic in the last uh, week. You know, so these are my friends. These are the people, uh, yeah, I kind of know they're fictitious. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't feel like that to me. And you folks are all readers, right? And when you read a good book, you know, yeah, OK, the characters are sort of kind of fictional. Uh, but they don't really feel like that. Uh, if you're from the Harry Potter generation, you know, Harry, Hermione, and Ron are real. If you're from a different generation, you've got your own set of people uh, who are real to you. And comic books and science fiction are real to me uh, and very dear to me, uh, which is why I'm glad to be able to write them, to be able to make a living writing science fiction and fantasy and talking about it at uh, places like this. So uh, if you're interested in talking about science fiction or writing or anything like that, grab hold of me over the week and we'll sit down and have coffee and, and schmooze or whatever. I'm really happy to be here and I look forward to getting to know some of you over the weekend. Thank you.